Hi everyone, Bandana here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the open beta test and welcome back to the RTS Castle Stuff channel. Remember to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Today we're looking through the aircraft in the USA battle group available in the open beta. So, first thing we're going to click on is the AV-8B Harrier 2 Plus. It's the first one in the list. I've reset everything to the bottom for this one just so we can start and look through everything as we go. So, jets obviously have a lot of pylons, a lot of weapon options. I'm going to try and cover each weapon once in some kind of detail. And then in future we'll just say, we've already covered this, please refer back to the previous jet. I hope that makes sense. The reason for that is otherwise we'll be going through the same information over and over. Because a lot of the jets use the same weapons. So the Harrier 2 Plus has multitudes of weapon options we'll start with the outer pylons so on the outer pylons you can have the aim 9 sidewinder which we just added there the aim 9 sidewinder is a short range anti-air missile we can click on it there the sidewinder it has a range of up to 2000 meters it can engage helicopters and aircraft does what it says on the tin then you have the option of the amram the amram or the aim 120 amram depending on how specific you want to be this is a long-range anti-air missile. It engages other aircraft up to 5,000 meters in the game. Again, does what it says in the tin, fires a longer range at enemy aircraft. And then finally here, we have the sidearm. So the sidearm is a seed missile. We've seen this on the helicopters. However, this version of the sidearm has 4,000 meters effective range. So it has a much bigger range than the 1,000 on the helicopters. Do bear in mind, however, that when you're going in with this, that is kind of the range that enemy anti-air, or the big anti-air you're trying to take out with it, can also fire to, or even beyond that. So you're getting into enemy fire range. So it's a bit of a trade-off. You might get shot down. In the middle pylons, you have a little bit more choice. So the next pylon is out. We currently have Sidewinders equipped again. You can have the Amrams. You can have the Sidearms. Or you can start switching into ground attack stuff. So first up is the Maverick. The AGM-65 Maverick. 900mm heat penetration. Very high damage at 22. Reasonable blast radius. The aim here is to be taking out tanks with these things. They are hard-hitting anti-tank missiles. And obviously... Technically, they're going to come down, hopefully, towards the top of the target, so you might catch the top armor. And doesn't guarantee a top attack, obviously. But uh, that's what they're designed for. They're designed for taking out enemy tanks and enemy heavily armored vehicles more than anything else. Next up, we have the GBU-54 laser-guided JDAM 500 pound. So this can be laser-guided into the target. Fairly big bomb, 500 pounds. Big blast radius. Lots of suppressive power. Not a huge amount of heat penetration, but obviously if it's laser guided, there's a good chance it's going to land on top of its target and do damage to that top armor. And then you have the option of the GBU-55 L JDAM 1000 pound bomb. So bigger blast radius, more suppressive power, high damage, 65 millimeters heat penetration again is laser guided potentially so you can laser guide that bad boy in right on top of an enemy tank or a building or whatever else or whatever you can target with laser you can use that in the pylons a little bit more limited you have the choice of the aim 120 amram once more you can stick on the agm 65 maverick that gbu 54 jdam again four of them specifically this time i believe on the other one yeah it's only two there whereas on the inner pylon you can have up to four of those two of the gbu 55 l jdams thousand pound bombs again but here you can also have some zuni rockets look at those things 12 zuni rockets on each side quite a few of them 24 total obviously Good against infantry and light vehicles here, probably more than tanks, because the heat penetration isn't great. But I guess there's always potential that you catch some top armor with this. I don't think that would be impossible, since you're aiming to do sort of a strafing run with that. 
And the other option is a couple of fuel tanks if you want to keep it in the air a little bit longer. Down the centre line you have a couple of different options. One option is the equaliser. This is a GAU-12 equaliser, a 25mm Gatling gun. You can equip an ECM pod on there to make it harder to hit. You can stick a laser designation pod on there to allow you to laser designate targets. You can stick the GAU-12 on and the ECM pod or indeed the GAU-12 and the designation pod. So a few different options for that jet on the midline and obviously quite a few weapon choices. Okay, let's move on. The AV-8B Night Attack. So, similar in many ways. However, I believe the big difference here is likely that it can't have a radar system, which means that it can't take AMRAMs. So, this was, for example, the difference between the British and the American Harrier jets. So, the American Harriers, they added radar systems to them, so they could fire long-range missiles, whereas the British Harriers never had the radar systems fitted. So, they generally didn't fire long-range missiles. That's how I understand it anyway. A military buff can explain it in more detail in the comments, I'm sure. So, this one is mainly being used as a ground attack plane, or ground attack jet. So, on your outer pylons, you can have them empty. You can stick on the sidewinders, which are your short-range missiles, as we discussed before, up to 2,000 meters. Or we can have a couple of Mark 82 500-pound bombs on there. They are dumb bombs. You can stick on a couple of Mark 82 snake eyes. They're, again, 500-pound bombs. But these are high-drag bombs. High-drag. And then you can finally have CBU Rockeye 500 pound bombs. Now, the Rockeyes are cluster munitions, so these things drop off, pop open in mid-air, and rain down bomblets on their target area. So they hit the top armor of vehicles, guaranteed. They cause napalm in the area, so damage over time, and that's just to designate that they do open in the air. They are a cluster-type weapon. And obviously, reasonable heat penetration there for hitting the top armor of tanks and things like that. So, can be quite nasty, especially if you have lots of them dropping on one area. Now, we discussed two of the bomb types there, the Mark 82 and the Mark 82 Snake Eye. So... I just had a quick look to remind myself, and it's as I thought, in real life, low drag bombs you drop from a high height and they just drop, whereas high drag bombs tend to pop out a little parachute or something that slows them down, and often that's for low altitude bombing, so you drop your bombs and then you have time to get out before they hit the ground and explode. Um, and things like that, but I don't know if that's modelled in the game, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure how that's modelled in the game. Does anyone else know? Because I'm actually kind of curious if they've modelled that. So, middle pylons. Sidewinders. We can have those Mavericks again here. We can have the Mark 82. We can have the Mark 82 Snake Eye. We can have a couple of Mark 83 1,000 pound bombs. Obviously, big blast radius, etc. We can have a Mark 77 Fire Bomb. That is a napalm bomb that is guaranteed to top attack vehicles only 10 millimeters of heat penetration though but a huge amount of damage technically i don't believe that napalm has been performing amazingly well in the game from what people have said you can also have four of the rock eye 500 pound bombs those again are the cluster bombs or you can have 28 hydro rockets for a strafing run hydro rockets being the same that you will find on some helicopters good against infantry and vehicles in terms of the bombs, just for the record, um, it doesn't specify here. Obviously, it's target other than ground. It should be good against vehicles, infantry, and whatever else is on the ground. Light vehicles, tanks, it doesn't matter. You should be doing a bit of damage. Same with the snake eye. Thousand pound bombs definitely, again, should be damaging everything on the ground. Fire bomb, you'd hope would damage infantry a lot and do a reasonable amount to tanks, maybe, at least make them panic and stressed out. Clusters should do damage to everything in the game, 
but obviously particularly good against vehicles and then the hydro rockets good against light vehicles and good against infantry inner pylons mavericks 500 pound bombs the snake eye 500 pound bombs high drag the mark 83 thousand pound bombs the fire bomb the rock eye the hydro rockets and then the option of the zuni rockets the zuni rockets again hitting these guys difference between those 70 mil rockets i think the zuni rockets are bigger yeah so they the zuni rockets have heading towards twice the damage output per rocket so bigger rockets basically then on that center line, you can either have the GAU-12 Equalizer, the Mark 82 500 pound bomb, or the Mark 82 Snake Eye. So, a few different options there. But this one is mainly a strike craft aiming to take out ground targets. But yeah, I'm curious if anyone knows if the low drag and high drag bombs are modeled correctly in-game. Because I've not experimented with them. It's kind of the experimenting I would do in a game where I can control a few more things and maybe play against one person and just experiment a bit. But there we go. Let's move on to the Prowler. So the Prowler is basically, in effect, a dedicated anti-radar AA jet because it comes with the harm missiles. So, on the outer wing, it can either have ECM, one ECM and one harm missile, or it can just have two harm missiles. Harm missiles, or the AGM-88 harm missiles, are 5,000 meter range seed, with a guaranteed top attack. They are anti-radar, they will go in hunting down those radar vehicles and attack their top armor. They're pretty much a guaranteed one-hit kill. You do not want to mess with these things. And with their range, they obviously outrange the AA in the game currently. So, as long as you're careful with this, it can easily take out enemy radar AA if people aren't turning it off. On the inner pylons there, you can have the fuel tanks. You can have a fuel tank and a harm. Or again, you can have two more harms, giving you four, four harms in total. And making you basically a harm missile platform to take out radar anti-air. This is what people generally bring in as this battle group to take out Radar AA. At least that's what I've noticed in game and that's what I tend to take in. Okay, so this is the FA-18C Hornet, the next plane we're going to look at. It's a single-seater version of the FA-18. Uh, I've reset all of the weapons just so we can look through it one by one. So on the outer pylons you can have the AIM-9 Sidewinder, which... As we've seen before, 2,000 meter range can target both helicopters and aircraft. And what I'm going to note here, because I feel it's important now we've encountered something different, is the Seeker type here is active. And that means that it will do its own thing. It's kind of fire and forget, yeah? The AIM-7M Sparrow is a longer range missile than the Sidewinder. 2,000 to 4,000 meter range can only target aircraft, but it is a passive seeker type. So it's not a fire and forget missile. I believe you have to keep a track on your target for this to hit. So it doesn't say semi-active or anything like that. So I'm assuming you have to guide it into your target. So I'm not sure why you would take that, because technically to me that would be a negative thing. Um, depending on how it's modeled in the game, of course. Then we have the AMRAM, which we've already met, the AIM-120 AMRAM. Uh, this one up to 5,000 meters. Again, it's active, so this would be my choice out of these three options. I mean, the Sparrow is cheaper, I guess, for a reason. Um, but the Sidewinder and AMRAM are the choices there. Uh, other options here would be the Hydro Rockets, or indeed the Zuni Rockets once more if you're wanting to switch into something that can engage ground targets. Though with this bad boy, I'd be sticking with anti-air probably. Then on the inner pylons, you can have the fuel tanks, which are down the bottom there. You can stick on the Sparrows, the Amrams, or again, you can go for the Hydro Rockets or the Zuni Rockets. And then on the main fuselage, you can have a couple of Sparrows or a couple of Amrams. Honestly, with the FA-18C Hornet, I would probably be equipping this with Amrams either across the board or I'd consider sticking some sidewinders on the outside of the wing 
like the very out outer edge of the wing. Wait, do they come as default regardless, I think? They do. Apologies. So, the wings always come with two sidewinders. So, yeah, I just amram this bad boy up. It's got a cannon by default. Take six amrams, sidewinders, and you have yourself a very nasty anti-air jet. Proper air superiority fighter going in there. Yeah. Didn't quite click with me. I apologise that... Uh, the Sidewinders are included free on the wingtips there. You don't get the option to take them off, so they're there regardless. But yeah, this would be very nasty with all of those AMRAMs on. Next up, the FA-18D Hornet. This one is a twin-seater version of the FA-18. Uh, this one obviously perhaps aimed more at ground attack because you have someone to man the weapon systems. So again, it does have... The sidewinders on the outside of the jet, on the wingtips there, you don't get the option to remove those. On the outer pylons, you can have them empty. You can go in with the Mavericks, which we've seen before. Those are your, effectively, anti-tank missiles, or anti-vehicle missiles. You can go for the Rock Eye, 500-pound bombs. Four of them this time, two on each side. Those are your cluster bombs. You can go with four of the Snake Eyes. Four of the Fire Bombs, the Napalm Bombs. Four Mark 83 thousand pound bombs or two Mark 84 two thousand pound bombs. Now, those bad boys, yeah, look at the blast radius and damage on those. Nasty, but not laser guided. Do bear that in mind. Those, those are just going to free drop on a target. Then on the inner pylons, you're going to have some fuel tanks. You can go for the Mavericks. You can go for the Rock Eye cluster bombs. You can go for the Snake Eyes. You can go for the fire bombs, the Mark 83 thousand pound bombs, or those 2,000 pound bombs once again. And then the fuselage, not a huge amount of options. You need to have it empty. Go with the Sparrow for some reason. I'll stick the Amrams on there, which is probably what I would do. I'd stick with the Amrams. Again, you do get the 20 millimeter Gatling gun on there. So you still got plenty of firepower in that respect. Okay. Next up is the F-35B. Everyone knows this bad boy, right? Very modern jet, stealth fighter. All of its weapons are kept in these bays, only to be opened when they're ready to fire. Trying to keep its low profile. So, a few different options here, and some new stuff that we haven't seen. So, the first thing is we can have some AMRAMs on there. So, what I will just point out is, because it's not obvious... So this jet, regardless of what you choose, always gets two AMRAMs. So at the bottom there, you can see there's two AMRAMs. 5,000 meter range, anti-air missile. So it always gets the two AMRAMs in the center there. Always. Then you can choose what you want in each of the bays. So you can either add in another AMRAM. If you are so inclined, you can see it here. So there's another AMRAM in there. You could stick in a GBU-54L JDAM 500 pound bomb. So a laser designated 500 pound bomb. You can have a laser designated 1000 pound bomb. Make sure I've got the right one selected just to show you again. Bigger blast radius. You can have an AGM-154JSO thousand pound bomb now this is a little bit different so its effective range is four thousand meters the jso in real life is effectively a bomb with wings is how i would describe it so this thing flies towards its target from a long distance away and then once it gets over its target area it drops a load of bomblets the same as a cluster bomb. So it's effectively a long-range cluster bomb. That, you know, it almost would seem like a ballistic missile coming in because of its wings sticking out. But it just flies in towards its target and then dumps its payload across the target area. And obviously it can be laser-guided in, into top attack armor weapon, because it's that cluster again, acts as napalm damage over time, and obviously does damage over a big area so quite nasty even to infantry and things the other option is the gbu 
53 Stormbreaker. You get three of those in there. The Stormbreaker is also a low drag bomb. That's what the JSO is also considered, but it's a one with wings. So I know they say low drag bombs, but technically, again, it's got little wings. So it goes flying towards its target. This is basically, again, a direct attack weapon. It's laser designated, potentially, and obviously its wings and things can help it fly towards its target correctly. And, again, just a big explosion radius. But not as big as the clusters, obviously. It's a more like a direct attack bomb. On the port side bay, got the Amrams, got the JDAM, 500 pounds, thousand pound the jso again and again three of those storm breakers so you can have six of those storm breakers so you know if you are good at laser designating on the ground then that could be pretty effective at that technically this can laser designate itself by the way but uh, obviously ideally you would want whatever target you're going for laser designated when you bring this in the map you already want something doing the laser designating Ideally something, you know, like a recon unit on the ground. Finally is the big transport plane, the KC-130J Harvest Hawk. Well, this bad boy can carry 20,000 supply, or heavy lift weight. 64 people. It can have some options fitted to it, so it can be empty. You can stick some Hellfire missiles on there, we've seen those before. Can even target infantry and also vehicles and can be laser guided and then you've got the gbu 53 storm breakers available on there as well you can't actually see them i don't think oh yes you can the pylon at the edge there there you go right at the edge of the wing and the fuselage you can stick on 10 griffin missiles Those can hit infantry or vehicles. I guess those are inside. So you can't actually see them. They're obviously not going to be the biggest missiles because they've got a pretty small blast radius. But uh, I've never actually used them. So I'm not sure how they perform. But mostly this thing's brought in for transport. So I probably wouldn't equip anything to it to be honest. Because it's not like it's going to engage other aircraft that try to shoot it down. You're going to need to bring in the FA-18C Hornet to assist with that, or even the Harrier, I guess. So, quite a lot of options here. A lot of options in terms of different bomb types and things. Um, my choices here would be, if you want something that's specifically going to be anti-air, then the FA-18C Hornet is pretty good at that, obviously, and comes with plenty of flares as well. Um, I'm not sure I would... I wouldn't take anything ground attack with that. I'd focus on that being your air superiority fighter. Equally, the Harrier 2 Plus, you could take a mixture with that, I suppose. The Hornet, very good at striking ground targets. And then if you want something that can perform a few different roles in one, then the F-35B is particularly good at that and obviously has its stealth advantage. But yeah. Oh, Prowler, by the way, for Seed. If you want to take out Radar AA, I highly recommend the Prowler. Obviously, you're kind of limited in the deck because you only have 1,000 points to spend here. So you're not going to be able to take every jet you want to. Just bear that in mind. There you go. All the jets currently in the open beta. Which is going to last for another few days. They've extended it, which is great news. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you all soon.